So this isn't going to be a build breakdown, but I am going to show you some little tips and tricks here to help you kind of understand how Gaia is working as more of an ease of life thing. So try and help you understand where things are pinned for uh, just as a pin or as an underlay. You can change the UI scale size. You can change the quality of the viewport, so on and so forth. Those are kind of the things that we're going to show you as well as the portals because the, the way portals worked in the past is completely different than how it is now. So I'm just going to go out and throw a... Uh, a Perlin or whatever. I don't care what it doesn't really matter in this case. I'm going to throw that out there and um, As many of you know, you can have graphlets inside of Gaia so you can have the main graph But then if you hit this plus icon you can make a new graph and you can make Quite a few of them um, and then if you right click on those graphlets You can change the color of the graph so you can make this one red you can do it for this one, too We'll just keep that one um, uh, as no color, which is this one right here. And then um, as you see here, the one that's selected will move the color to the top and when it's not selected, it's to the bottom. So that's pretty simple. But additionally, if you have a bunch of nodes in here, so we'll just throw another pearl in here, but you can have as many as you want. Um, and then right here, if you were to right click on this pearl in and hit pin or hit F on your keyboard, and then you can also do the same thing for underlay or you can hit G you'll notice that this graph now has the pin and the underlay pin on here and it'll show it right here as well in the graph name. So you'll know where your pin node is as well as your underlay pin is. Uh, so if you have you know three or four different graphs here with a bunch of nodes in it doing who knows what you're doing with them, you'll know where you have your pinned nodes. So that's pretty nice. That way you don't have to swap between the graphs to look for those pins, especially when you start having hundreds upon hundreds of nodes, which some builds can take. Additionally, the, the portals are, work really easily, and this is not new to 1.3, but um, something that I never um, never mentioned since my first portal uh, tutorial, which that is completely, um, uh, that, that whole process has changed completely. So um, the way portals work now is a lot easier in my opinion. So we have a node here. So let's go ahead and drag out from the output and then uh, let go. We'll have a make portal option here. So now we have this one as an output portal. Now if we go to any other graph that we have in any other node, we can then take the uh, input, drag out from that and go to portals and then Perlin. That's the one that we had there. And also, still to this day, you can rename nodes. So if you wanted to, uh, and this has been around in Gaia for a long time, so if you had a couple purlins with a different portals on there, you can rename these purlins to whatever you want. So this one could be like purlin main or something like that, it doesn't really matter. And that way when you go out, it, it updates the name here. But if you had a bunch of different portals in there, you'll know which one it is. So that's pretty helpful. Um, so portals are a lot easier. In the past, you had to essentially move your nodes to a graph, connect the portals, and then move the nodes that you didn't want in that graph back to the main graph. And that was just too much little clicking here and there to, uh, and it, I mean, it, it was nice for the time, but it's not that way anymore. And it's a lot better now than it was then. So uh, that's how you would use the portals in this sense. Very simple and very easy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this. If you like to use Gaia in a non-docked mode, um, in the past Gaia had a floating uh, viewport option. It's still there in 1.3, it's just not as apparent because it's been moved to a right-click submenu. If you right-click on the orbit icon, you can choose between docked and floating. And if you choose, um, I'm just gonna do this right now because Gaia still has an issue where you click on floating, it kind of creates all sorts of different problems when it's maximized. Uh, but if you click on floating, it'll then change, and it did it anyways, okay. Um, it'll maximize this, I guess, and then it'll make your viewport floating. So now you can put this on a second monitor, um, or you can put your node graph on a second monitor, so on and so forth. Very simple. And then if you wanna go back to docked, you just go back to docked. And that's right clicking on the orbit icon there. Another thing you can do is you can change the GUI UI. Um, that'll change the, the size of the overall um, application in both terms of its objects and its text. So if you find that things are too small and you need them larger, you could just use this option right here, which is your scaler. Um, we have set it to 100, but we can go to 175 and that makes things a lot, a lot bigger. 
Um, and in this case, it created it so big that it doesn't fit the node graph on my window. So um, I don't use 175 in a lot of cases anyways. I usually just stick with 100 because that's fine for me. But if you need it larger, you can definitely do that. <clears throat> Also, in the past, I had said after 1.3 was released that I thought that these three dots meant that they just kind of represent these three options here. That's just total, um, uh, that, that's just uh, entirely wrong. So uh, I'm not afraid to point it out. If I said something wrong, then feel free to correct me. But that is not the case. Those three icons represent the viewport quality. So if you right click on this, you can uh, click on any of these three uh, different viewport quality options and it's on you have the three dots here that means it's using quality if you have one dot it means you're using draft um, and then you can see here after we update the node draft just kind of gives you fake shadows it doesn't really give you real-time shadows and that might come in handy if you have old hardware or if your performance is slug sluggish uh, if you had two dots, it's on performance. That gives you what I think might be just a little bit of ambient light inside the viewport. But to me, it just mostly looks like a contrast change, but I could be completely wrong uh, on that as well. And then three obviously gives you these real shadows that come from the light here. So um, additionally, I, I haven't really played with the lighting and then changing the 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 performance here but it does look like it changes the um, the quality of the light as well so simple very simple changes here um, and again this isn't a build I apologize for that but I figured that these might be nice little things to know about if you're using Gaia and you needed to know a few certain things but uh, in any case that'll be it for this video you can access all the links that I provide for the end of my videos in my link tree link in the video description that houses the discord server URL so you can join it doesn't expire there's no expiration date on that one that way I don't have to keep recycling a link um, for the discord for every video I just made one link I put it in there you can also find my gumroad my art station and a few other things in there that you might find interesting but if you wanted to join the discord and be part of the community and help us grow and become better Gaia users or just better 3d artists in general go ahead and join the discord uh, we just had a few people join today it's really great it's growing it's a big growing community at the moment I really love it um, there will be more stuff coming in the future uh, regarding content for the Gumroad subscribers um, as well as more future videos on more things other than just Gaia but I I am mainly a Gaia channel but I'm trying to expand outside of that because I don't want to be just exclusively Gaia I do a lot of stuff in Vue still as well as uh, RealFlow, Cinema 4D, um, World Creator I'm going to be doing a lot more World Machine stuff too as well um, but that's all going to be further down the line but for now it's going to be mostly uh, Cinema 40 and Gaia. So we're, we're expanding, but slowly. So uh, in any case, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.